Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I am going to talk about user defined table functions in Snowflake. In previous video, I talked about UDF, which you can implement using SQL, Python, JavaScript and Java as well. Now, so that was a scalar function and this is tabular function. So in scalar functions, you get single row as a result and in tabular function, you get rows of data. So you can get multiple rows right so that is called table functions so before we begin make sure you have access to a snowflake account and basic understanding of sql and snowflake concepts so to go through that you can always go back to my channel and you get to look at into other videos to get understanding on the snowflake concepts so let's get started so first we have to connect to snowflake account so this is the account i'll just log in using username and password so as I have enabled uh, two-factor authentication in my account, so I'll just send me a push. So I'll have to approve from my mobile. Okay. So yeah. So as you can see, uh, when I approved, automatically it's logged into the account. Now uh, to understand what are the table functions, we should have uh, database and schema because you always create table functions at the schema level so whenever you are creating any new table right so that has to be into an specific schema now so as i have already created udtf demo database and the public schema so i'll just run this commands so as it is ran successfully uh, this automatically sets because i have right written this commands like use database this and use schema public so it will select database and schema now before creating a new table functions we have a lot of inbuilt table functions provided by snowflake so as you can see here result scan flatten get query operator states so these are some of them which are we use regularly so so before going through this what i would like to do is that i'll run one of the query and we'll see how we can use this result scan and get query operator states function okay so this is the query uh, which is uh, one of the inbuilt view login history right so in account uses view so select star from snowflake account storage in login history and i'm just going to hit this command actually yeah so we have to enable the warehouse so now warehouse is resumed and now i will be able to run this query so once i'll run the query it gives you the result now this result scan is one of the very useful command or you can say table function where suppose you are doing some kind of research and you rain one query which is very costly i mean it rained for 10 minutes and you got a result now suddenly you forgot and hit another command and you forgot to download this data or somewhere right and you did not store into any temporary table as well so you can always use this result scan and take the query id from the query history so here i am not going to query history but i'll just copy this query id and i will paste it here so this syntax of calling table functions is like you have to have from table and inside the bracket you have to give the table function name so here the table function name is result scan and then query id so once you hit this command it will give you the same data this is the same this query gave us earlier right so now you can do any operation like you want to do order by or you want to filter further right so now this data are stored in this query result so they are there until that query history is there right so there are some retention period for that as well we'll talk about it later now uh, the same similar to this result scan this is the get query operator stats so basically this will help you give the profile of the query so when you run this query let me run this query so it will give you the query profile of this query so how this query ran so suppose uh, okay i forgot to open that query profile but let me open it so if you go to the query profile and i'll just use this query id here and profile so it will give me the profile of this right so as you can see there are three blocks the same three blocks are as row we are getting here secure view limit and result the so same same those three are there secure view limit and result right so you can always programmatically analyze 
this query profiles in your code right so this is how you can use this table functions now how to create this table function for ourselves right so as of now i'll take it uh, one of the example like suppose we are giving a string and we want all words as a separate row and the length of that word so basically when you are doing some natural processing right natural language processing in those kind of uh, scenarios you always give a lot of big strings and then you tokenize them so while tokenizing uh, there there is a tokenizing system where you get each word separately right so in this case i want to create a table function which gives me the all words as a row and the second column should be a length of the word right now the syntax is very simple create or replace as usual for any other object you can use that right and then function is a generic function the same syntax which you used in user defined functions the same syntax you have to use here only change is that in returns you have to have table as a result so table and then what are the columns you are going to return those you have to define here or declare here as you say right so word where care and word length is number now language is sql so in this video i am going to show you that sql based but in next video i will going to create separate video for python based uh, python based and uh, javascript based as well so both i will create the separate video for that okay because there is some complexity or you can say there are some structure of that so i will talk about that later now in sql based you can write one sql here inside that so what's the difference between the sql uh, table function and the view right so let's let's talk about that later but before that i would like to create this function so split to rows input string where i'll just give the string like this and return is word and word length sql and the syntax is as you know as i talked about it in the previous video here select and again we used one table function here but for table function you can use this literal as well so this is the input we are splitting this by space right and then what we are doing is flatten the by uh, that each value from the array and this is alias and then f dot value as a where care because we are returning as where care and the length of that value is word length okay so once i enter this it should be creating into the schema so if you want to see show functions in schema public okay so if you like if you do this it will automatically use the current database and in, inside the current database it will take the schema and inside that schema whatever the functions are there all functions will be returned here so these are all inbuilt function actually so what is the function name split to string right so it should be rs yeah here it is see split to rows so this is the public schema and it shows all the functions into this public schema now why these other functions are also showing because uh, they are generic and they are usable in each schema that is why it is showing here okay now let's go further and let's call this table function so again the same syntax i am going to use table and inside that the function name and inside that i am just passing the string big string snowflake utility apps are very useful for complex data processing so if i hit this again sorry this so i have set this one minute as a auto suspend and i had i haven't kept uh, kept it as auto resume because uh, i'm just want to save some cost here this is just for demo purpose i'm implementing so yeah again now i'll be able to run this query and as you can see all the words are separate as a row and the length of those words are showing here so same way if you want if you want to do something mathematical operations you give Uh, some kind of range and you want uh, squares of them or whatever it is right so those kind of stuff you can always use now as i talked about it earlier right so what's the difference between the normal views and the table functions because views are also like that right so they are also used used for transformation but a real time transformation and this is are also going to be the like that real time transformation so in normal views you cannot give inputs so whatever query you have written that query will run and on top of that whatever filters you are trying to apply those will be applied but in table function suppose let me give you an example so we have a company which storage lot of 
database or lot of data of customers now there are three or four tables you are using in one query you are joining them right so what you are doing what you are going to do in view you are going to join all the tables and then going to filter so that will costly operation right so in table function what you can do is you can run that join but as you are taking customer as an input you will use that customer as a filter in each query and that will help you to filter each tables and that will join on the only filtered data so that way the performance will be improved so there are a lot of use cases are there you can always utilize them so there are some important points uh, like uh, tabular functions have a limit one fun, uh, that is one thing you have to remember like 500 input arguments can be given in this example we we gave only one input string you can always give 500 and output also the same way so you can all, only output 500 columns not more than that okay so that is one thing then what is that yeah the second is benefit against normal views as i said right where you can filter all the tables based on given input before for joining so when you filter before joining it will always give you advantage right and you always become be cautious because you can all, always get into sql injection because you are getting the input and the same input you are going to use into the query right so make sure that is uh, there and you always do some proper and uh, error handling to manage unexpected inputs okay so those are the things you have to keep in mind okay now that's pretty much from this uh, user defined table function i'm going to create a video separately for python based udtf so yeah so thank you very much for watching this one if you found this tutorial helpful please like share and subscribe for more, more content happy querying with snowflake see you next time thank you